Lord, as we look to you now and uh, still give you the praise and the glory for what you're doing now, for what you have done, and uh, for what you're going to do. We pray now that uh, the word that comes forth will be that uh, which will touch your children, your sheep, that it will guide, that it will strengthen and encourage each one of us to draw closer and to grow stronger in you. Use me for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. The Lord bless you, the Lord bless you. Turn, if you will, to the uh, Gospel of Mark. Uh, that is the book, this is the book that the Lord uh, has been leading me to in these uh, past few weeks. And uh, we'll continue here. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, and we shall regard verses 31 through 34. Mark, chapter 8. 31 through 34, and they read as follows. And he began, this is Jesus, began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days, rise again. He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God but the things of men. When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Excuse me. These words from Jesus as recorded by Mark, the subject today is embrace the right kingdom. Embrace the right kingdom. We find Jesus at this time in his ministry. Jesus has completed uh, at least one year of his ministry and is now embarking on uh, his second year. Jesus only uh, preached for about three, uh, maybe three and a half years. And now he is moving into the second year of his ministry. And he makes a disclosure as he is with the people and uh, certainly with his disciples. Jesus had been preaching uh, from the beginning of his ministry that the kingdom of God is at hand. If you recall in the first chapter of Mark's gospel, that is the message that John the Baptist had been preaching, and when John the Baptist was arrested, Jesus came right behind him and picked up on that same subject matter and that same theme, that the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. And so, as Jesus has been preaching that and teaching that, uh, Jesus always teaching, uh, certainly, his disciples, he makes this disclosure. It says in verse 31, he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days, rise again. Jesus and all of his teaching up to this point now drops a bombshell. And uh, 
really gets the attention, uh, the open ears of his disciples and certainly of others who were there, that he is going to be rejected, he's going to be killed, and after three days, he will rise again. Verse 32, he spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. In other words, uh, Peter took Jesus by the arm after he heard him say this and just took him uh, away from the group, away from the other disciples. And uh, in, in so many words, uh, Peter was asking Jesus, why, why, why are you saying this? What, what is it that you mean by this uh, disclosure of your life, now of your death, of your death. Peter, like many others, and it's not the first time, Peter was looking for the establishment of the kingdom of God to take place here on earth. He was looking for this, according to Jesus preaching now, Jesus had been preaching, the kingdom of God is at hand, is at hand. And so Peter, uh, in hearing these words, all the disciples, they were following Jesus because of this, and the multitudes, they were following as well, that the kingdom of God uh, was going to be established here on earth. Uh, 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 man, man has longed for a utopia here on earth. And that word simply means, utopia means uh, a, 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 a place and a time of perfect happiness. A place and time of perfect peace. Uh, when you can have and be grateful for uh, anything that you want, it doesn't matter about what it is, you have anything on earth that you desire. That's utopia, a time of uh, a perfect world order. And so as man, uh, they've been looking for this. Man has always been looking for a man to lead them into this utopian society. In other words, men have been looking uh, for years, for decades, for thousands and thousands of years now, men have been looking for a political messiah, someone who can lead us into this perfect existence here indeed on earth. And we find that happening even now in our time. I don't know if you've been paying much attention to some of the candidates uh, who are uh, in the ring, uh, wanting to be recognized and running for uh, president, that uh, uh, they are bringing a message, some of them, uh, 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 about a utopian society that they feel they can help uh, uh, exist, uh, whereby you can have free everything free everything. You can have uh, uh, a free health care. Uh, you can have uh, free food. Uh, you can have free education. You can have free this and free that, free housing. Uh, anything that you want, if you indeed will vote for me, pick me uh, to be the candidate. Uh, indeed, that should go forward. Well, that's what the people thought at that time. And even today, they are saying, uh, I remember one of the first debates, the question was asked, uh, what do you feel about free health care for not only all of the people of the nation, the citizens, but even for the illegal immigrants who come across uh, the line? And all of them raised their hand. We're for free health care for anybody that comes into the country. Well, how in the world are you going to pay for it, for, for, for one thing? Uh, but all of that's to be decided 
as time goes on. But that's what the people thought they had in Jesus. They had this man uh, that, that, that they thought was going to be their political, their political Messiah. He was a man who was going to balance the scales of justice in order that the uh, uh, rich uh, would not have all of the conveniences, but the poor and the needy uh, would have just as many conveniences as anybody else, even to getting a free out-of-jail card. Uh, you've heard them talk about free bail for everybody. Well, the way to really get out of jail is don't get in jail, and you don't have to worry about bail. Uh, but but uh, uh, here some are wanting to have free bail for everybody. Well, they said Jesus can do that. Remember when he had forgiven the woman uh, who was caught in adultery, and uh, others there wanted to stone her to death. Well, by the time Jesus got finished with it, all of the witnesses had left. They had gone, they had disappeared, and the woman not only didn't have to be locked up, she wasn't stoned to death. So they said, this is the Messiah that we want for our kingdom here on earth. This is the Messiah. Not only that, but uh, he's the one who can, who can give us uh, uh, health care, uh, uh, free health care for everybody. Uh, he's the one that we've seen heal the sick, and everybody, when they come in contact with him, uh, uh, he seems to make them well. Not only that, he can even raise the dead, raise the dead, free health care for everybody. He's a man who can uh, give us all the clothes that we want, free clothes for everybody. Jesus can do that. Remember, when the man was possessed with demons, when his life, was of such that he was naked. Nobody could control him. He lived in the tombs among dead people. The word said he was naked. Uh, 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 but when Jesus drove the demons out of the man, the word says that the man was sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. Jesus didn't send the man down to the first mall that he could get to. And he didn't order through Amazon any clothes to, to come there. Somehow, in a miraculous way, uh, this man who had been naked, suddenly he had clothes on his body. We can get free clothes from Jesus. We can get free housing uh, if we just get Jesus to lead us. He's the Messiah that we want. We've seen him send out his disciples to go evangelize in different villages, in different places. And he told them, whatever house you enter into, if they receive you, you've got a roof over your head. If they reject you, just leave that house, shake the dust off your feet, go to another place, and they'll receive you. You've got free housing uh, when it comes to you. You've got free education. The education will all be paid for. So just think of how Jesus, we've seen him sitting there on the mount teaching people. We've seen him teaching his disciples and teaching the multitudes. And he never passes the collection plate. You can get free college education from Jesus if we just let him be our leader. Think about food. Free food if we follow Jesus. Oh, look at what he's done. He had already fed 5,000. And not only after that, he fed 4,000 more. This man giving free food. He's the person that we want to establish this kingdom on earth. And so Peter was saying, you've been preaching that all the good things, you've been showing all the good things of the world that seemingly we can have if we follow you. He said, you're the man we've been waiting for, Jesus. You're the man that uh, we, we find that we want to be our leader. That's why we've given up everything to follow him. You're the one who can bring about this utopia here on earth. You're the one who's able to establish this perfect kingdom 
right here on earth. Jesus, we're on a roll. Look at the multitude, Jesus. Uh, think about all of those who are following you now. Uh, just look at the crowd. Your popularity is going through the roof. Uh, everybody seems to like you and seems to love you everywhere that we go. The people are ready for this kingdom here on earth whereby we can have everything that we want and you can be the king. The word teaches us that the people did want Jesus to be the king. In the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John, it tells us that there was the time when the people wanted to make Jesus their king by force, by force that they came upon him, but Jesus just departed from them and went away to a solitary place. And so Peter was saying, you're the one, and now you're talking about death. You're talking about your dying. Jesus, you need to change your strategy. If you're going to stay popular, and if the people indeed are going to follow you. Verse 33 says, but when he, Jesus, had turned around after Peter rebuked Jesus, Jesus, the word says, looked at his disciples and he rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. He referred to Peter as Satan, because Jesus was saying, really, in so many words, Peter, Satan has already tempted me about the kingdoms of the world. Satan has already come to me when I had come out of the wilderness after having fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. That was one of the temptations that Satan said, if you're the son of God, uh, bow down before me, having shown him, shown him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. He said, if you're the son of God, you can have it all if you just bow before me. Bow before me. And of course, Jesus told Satan to get behind me. Get behind me. He was telling Peter at this time, get behind me, Satan. For I know what Satan is really all about. And Jesus was saying, Satan is tempting you now as he tempts all men of every age and everywhere to fall in love with the world and with the kingdom of this world, whereby you can enjoy all of the things that this world has to offer. He was saying to Peter, you're thinking just like Satan, thinking about the kingdom of the world, the kingdom of the world. You're confusing, he was saying, the kingdom of God with the kingdom of the world. Satan says you can have the world and you can have all of the riches of the world. You can have all of the glory and the honor and the fame and the fortune. You can have anything that you want, all of the pleasures of the flesh. You can have them free. Satan says they're all available for you. But what Satan is not saying is that the kingdom of the world is tainted. The kingdom of the world is dirty. The kingdom of the world is temporal because of sin in the world. And the kingdom of the world in being temporal means that it will not last. The kingdom of the world, Satan is not saying, will lead you to hell if you follow and remain a part of this kingdom. Jesus was saying the kingdom of God is above the kingdom of the world. The kingdom of God is greater than the kingdom of the world. The kingdom of God is superior to the kingdom 
indeed of the world. For the kingdom of God is not led by man. Remember, they were looking at Jesus simply as a mere man. You're the man that we want. You're the one. You're the person. Jesus, you the man who's going to help us to have everything free. Jesus was saying, no, I'm talking about something greater than the kingdom of this world. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not led by man, but is led by the Son of God. He was saying also to Peter and to the other disciples, you ought to know better by now, but you don't, that's why I'm teaching you. He was saying in so many words, remember what I said just a short time ago when we were in Caesarea Philippi, and you find that in verses 27 through 30 of this same eighth chapter, Jesus asked them, who do men say that I am? And they answered, some say you're John the Baptist. John the Baptist had already been beheaded and was dead. Some said you're John the Baptist who's come back to life, just another man. Some said that you're Elijah, one of the great prophets of old. Some say that you're one of the other prophets, just a man who has come back to life. Jesus said, well, that's what men are saying about me, that I'm a, a man in some fashion, but who do you say that I am? And Peter is the one who answered and said, you are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, Peter, but my father revealed it to you through the spirit. You already know that I'm the son of God. Why do you look at me as a mere man uh, to be your leader? For a mere man can't lead you to the kingdom of God the kingdom of God is led by the Son of God, by the Son of God. It is the kingdom of God. Jesus was saying that it's better than what Satan has to offer in the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of God is not temporal. The kingdom of God is eternal. In other words, if you want lasting hope, you find that in the kingdom of God. If you want lasting joy, you find that in the kingdom of God. If you want lasting peace, in the kingdom of God. If you want lasting love, you find it in the kingdom of God. If you want life, true life, everlasting life, you find that in the kingdom indeed of God. Jesus was saying, if you just follow me, I'll take you to the kingdom of God to move you from this kingdom of this world. Well, the question is, and I'm sure that some of them were saying, well, if we follow you to the kingdom of God, what about all the free stuff? What about the free food? And, and the free health care? And the free education? The housing and clothes? Think about what Jesus said in answer to that. He said in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, don't worry about you going to eat. Don't worry about the clothes for the body, food for the body, our drink for the body. In other words, don't worry about all of these things that look like they're free if you just seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness all of these things will be added to you. In other words, if God is first, the kingdom of God is first, I'll give you food. It may not be free food, but I'll see that you eat. I'll see that you have clothes. It may not be free, but I'll see that you get them. I'll see that you have a roof over your head. I'll see that you have health care. It may not be free, but you'll get it if you just seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, all of these things will be added unto you. So Jesus was going on to explain that the things of God, he said to Peter, 
You're mindful, not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. He was saying the things of God and the kingdom of God are altogether different than the kingdom of the world. Jesus is saying the kingdom of God involves a holy kingdom that you have to do something about sin to be a part of. Now, as long as you want to stay in this world, you're going to stay in the muck and in the mire and in the filth and in the dirt of sin in this world. Jesus was saying, I'm talking about the kingdom of God not the kingdom of this world. He says something has to be done about sin and that's why I must suffer. That's why I have come, he was saying. Uh, in that uh, uh, 31st verse, he said the Son of Man must suffer many things. He said, I've come uh, in order to pave the way to do something about others coming out of sin and finding salvation through me. So the kingdom of God involves, he said, my suffering, my sacrifice, and my death. The kingdom of God involves the fact that my body has to be broken and that my blood has to be shed for the sins of the world. The kingdom of God involves the fact that my going to the cross has to come about in order that I can take away the sins of the world. I think about and marvel at what Jesus was saying to them. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. But look, he also said to them, but after three days, Rise again. That just went in one ear and out the other. What focus uh, within their mind was that he's going to die, that he's going to be killed. Well, Jesus was saying that I'm here and death will occur. I have to die. I came to die for the sins of the world. But then he challenges all of those who are there. 34th verse says, when he had called the people to himself, the multitudes there with his disciples also. He said, whoever desires to come after me, in other words, if you're going to be my disciple, if you're going to look at me as the son of God, if you're going to enter into the kingdom of God, any man who desires to come after me to get into the kingdom of God, Jesus said three things here. Let him first deny himself. In other words, say no to self. Say no to self. Self wants to sin. Self wants to do everything that self wants to do. Self wants to enjoy the pleasures of this world and the sins of this world. That's what self wants to do. Self wants to be famous. Self wants to be full of pride and, and to have wealth and to have a big name and to be in the spotlight and enjoy the pleasures of sin. Jesus said, yes, you can have all of that, but what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So don't say uh, yes to sin. Say no to sin. No to self. And say yes to Christ Jesus. Jesus said, deny yourself. If you're going to come after me, get into the kingdom of God. Not only deny yourself, but take up his cross. When we're talking about cross, Jesus is talking about death. Disciples knew what the cross meant. Uh, uh, it means death, and it meant dying. Jesus said, my death will come because of entering and paving the way for the kingdom of God, but it'll also happen to anybody else who wants to follow me into the kingdom of God, take up his cross. We become dead to sin. That's what Paul talked about. We become dead to sin, but alive in Christ Jesus. We identify with being believers of Jesus Christ. 
as the Son of God and as the Savior of the world. Jesus said, whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel, the same will find it. So Jesus said, one, if you're going to enter in, deny yourself. Take up his cross. Everybody has to take up your cross and follow me. In other words, live a life committed to Jesus Christ and be proud to be a Christian. Be proud of it. You don't have to hang your head or be ashamed of being a Christian. Be proud that you're a Christian. Jesus said, follow me. Not only that, but we live a life committed to the gospel and be proud to obey the word of God. Not being ashamed of Jesus, nor being ashamed of his word. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you when I come in my glory with angels. Uh, so don't be ashamed of it. Jesus was further teaching Peter and the disciples and the others, understand that the kingdom of God is not material. The things of this world, it's not the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of God is spiritual. It's spiritual. We were all born into this world and didn't have anything to say about it. Didn't have anything to do about it other than wait our nine months time until uh, it was time for us to enter into this world and uh, once we were born to give out a cry that we were living and that we were alive, didn't have anything to do with it coming into this world. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, we have something that we can do about it. We have to make a choice. We make the decision. So Jesus said, you're born into this world. If you're going to get into the kingdom of God, you've got to be born again. Born, born again. He said, unless you're born again, you don't see the kingdom of God. And unless you're born of the water and of the spirit, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. And so we find the new birth into the kingdom of God, coming when we give our lives to the Lord. Now, maybe you've given your life to the Lord sometime in the past, and it could have been years ago. It could have been recently. But we have to rededicate ourselves over and over again when it comes to living for the Lord and being worthy that he accepts us into the kingdom, certainly, of God, being born again. Ultimately, we find out, as Jesus said, not only is it that we're in the kingdom of God, but he said the kingdom of God is in you, is in you. We let the Lord live within us, being born again. He lives within us. We become new creatures in Christ Jesus. As new creatures in Christ Jesus, what makes us different from the citizens of this world. They're trying to make this world a perfect place. Jesus didn't save us for that. Jesus saved us and uses us to make the world a better place, but never to make it a perfect place. It'll never be a perfect place. That's why the Bible teaches that heaven and earth will pass away. All of this will be going away. But the word of the Lord is that which will stand forever. There will be a new heaven and a new earth for those who indeed have been born again and are citizens of the kingdom of God. So John says in his epistle, love not the world kingdom of this world, don't love the world, he said, are the things of this world. For if any man, anyone loves this world, the love of the Father is not in him, is not in him. So he said everything that is of the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of God. It is of the world, it's not of the Father, 
but is of the world. So he says that we have to watch this old world as it passes away. Whoever does the will of God, he says, abides forever, abides forever. And so we trust in him to do his will and choose, make a decision that we're going to be a part of, not the kingdom of the world, but the kingdom of God. We're in the world, Jesus says, but not of the world. We're to be different. We're to be followers of Jesus Christ. So embrace the right kingdom, follow Jesus, understand what we're looking at even at this season, focusing on Jesus going to the cross for our sins and the sins of the world. And if you would desire to give your life to Jesus, remember that he's already paid the debt He's already paid the debt. Jesus paid the price that you might be free. He gave himself. The word says without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sins. Jesus wants us to be saved. His blood cleanses us from all sin and unrighteousness. If you are here and would desire to give your life to Christ, the invitation is extended to you, and the door of the church is open for whosoever will to come. And if you're desiring to give your life to Jesus, one of our officers will be standing on each side of the church. Just let one of them know that you're coming to give your life to the Lord. You want to be forgiven of your sins, and you've been in prayer, and you trust that the Lord has forgiven you, giving you a new start. You want to give your life to him. You want to start being born again. Let them know, and they'll instruct you from there. If there's anyone without a church home, maybe you've been a member of a church, but for some reason, some uh, way, you got away from the church, and you want to return to the Lord. Return to him. You may come, and we'll receive you. If you're here and you desire prayer for whatever your needs are, we're here to bow with you and to pray for you that God will meet your needs. Whosoever will, let him come. Let us stand. And if there's one or more desiring to come, won't you come, won't you come, knowing that the Lord will receive you when you come with a sincere heart and with a mind that you want to be a servant of Jesus Christ. You want to be saved from your sins. You want to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior. Won't you come? Won't you come? Pray we'll all be ready. I pray.
traveling mercy that you afford us each and every day. We don't take that lightly. We see so many accidents along the streets and highways. We thank you, Lord, that you kept your hand of protection over us. Lord, the choir was singing, we want to be ready, pray to be ready for your return. 
help us, Lord, to be ready. We don't want you to catch us with our works undone. We want to be ready for your return. Lord, we, as our pastor just told us, we want to embrace the right kingdom. We want to seek you, Lord. Lord, help us. Hold our hands we run this race. Because we cannot run this race by ourselves. Where should have lead us, where should have guide us and show us the way. Help us to say yes to your will. Help us to be pliable for your glory. Lord, remember our pastor. We thank you for our pastor. Lord, we thank you for the wisdom that you've imparted to him, that he imparts to us. Thank you for him being a good shepherd over this congregation. We pray, O oh God, that you remember his companion. Lord, we ask you to continue to touch her, Lord, from the crown of her head down to the sole of her feet. Be a fence all around them both, Lord. Cover their home with your blood. Oh God, we pray that you remember these who have come. You know what they need, Lord. We pray, O oh God, that you will grant every request right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that you undo the heavy burden. We pray that you let the oppressed go free. We pray that you will break every yoke right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't remember that. Remember the young people that are standing here, Lord. We thank you for them. We pray, oh God, that you would just keep them in carriage, keep them in the church. We know Satan has to offer so much. But Lord, we know that you help them to seek you. Protect them in the schools. Protect them everywhere they go, Lord. Not only then, we pray, oh God, that you remember everyone in this building today. Maybe someone is sick. We know the doctors never lost the case. Maybe someone is burdened. We know he's a burden bearer. Maybe someone has a problem. We know he's a problem solver. Well, Lord, we know that you can take care of every situation. We want to put this and that in your hand, Lord. We can't do it, but we know you can. Because you sit high. You look low. You hold the power of the whole world in your hand. We thank you, O oh God for your sovereign power. We worship you today, Lord. We praise your name because you're worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy to be praised. Without you, we can't open our mouth. Without you, we can't raise our hand. And Lord, we're mindful that Satan has some power. We thank you because you got all power of heaven and earth in your hand. Pray, O oh God, that you remember those that are ailing today. We thank you for the ones that were ailing and you brought them back. We pray, oh God, for the ones that are needing surgery and other procedures. We pray, oh God, that you will take care of them. We know there's nothing too hard for you to do. We know you as the great physician. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for how you open up doors that were closed in our face. We thank you, Lord, for smoothing out the rough road for us. We thank you, Lord. You're so, you're so good to us. You're better to us than we deserve. Remember the ones in nursing homes. Touch them, Lord. Comfort them. Let them know that you haven't left them and you haven't forsaken them. Remember the ones behind prison bars, Lord. Remember sinners and backsliders, saving for us everlasting too late. But Lord God, we pray that you just Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Take us through. And, Lord, we're leaving the cases in your hand. You know how to work. You know when to work. You know just what to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.